so we just imaged the Western Vale Nebula. I posted that video already of the acquisition and everything, so you've already seen the final product. But now, let's go in and show you the actual processing of it. And today I'm going to throw in a couple other tips and tricks on how to process and other things that you can do that might help your images as well. So let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so we've got Pix Insight opened up. We're gonna go ahead and look at our images. So you can see I've got my blue, my green, my HA, my O3, my red, and my sulfur. The first thing that I'm going to do is minimize all of these and rename them because those file names just are simply too large. So with this video, we're going to actually try something with the SHO version. It's not going to be my posted version, but we're going to actually hit this particular version because I'm going to try to do a little bit of tone mapping. If you're not familiar with tone mapping, there's actually a wonderful YouTube video where JP Mezzaviano, I believe is how you pronounce it. I could be wrong there. Um, he's actually showing here how to do tone mapping when you have enough data to really stretch that data without introducing a ton of noise. We're going to do a variation of what he does um, with this. I'm not going to go anywhere near as in depth with some of the stretching. We'll be using some of the similar techniques, but we're going to utilize the primary technique. So with that, I'll put a link to this video below. If you want to check this particular video, out, he goes really in depth with it. We're going to just kind of scratch the surface with some of these techniques that he uses. I don't use all of them. Some of them are very time consuming, especially with his star removal process, but he gets great results when it comes to eliminating the noise in his videos. So by all means, check this out check his website out take a look and see if this could benefit you okay so back here in pix inside just because i like to keep everything in order s h and o so we've got all of our images here so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go to image integration i'm going to go to add files and i'm going to pick my ha my oxygen and my sulfur and I'm going to build a single image here. And now again, if you haven't checked out Steven's YouTube channel, Entering Into Space, by all means do so. This is actually the super luminance process that he's referred to, and I'm technically stealing that from him, but I don't, I don't think, Steven, if you're watching, you'll be too disappointed. We've smashed these together. Let's now take a look at the data I've got. I've not yet seen it, so this will be new for both of us. So this looks exceptionally well. I'm actually pretty surprised with it. If we zoom in, we can see there there is some noise to it. Um, so we'll definitely have to do some cleaning up, but the stars look really good. The hydrogen and oxygen are going to be your dominating um, elements that are in this mix from the supernova explosion. I'm really pleased with how it wasn't significantly blown out, even though these are 10 minute long exposures. Um, so this is actually turning out pretty nice. So the first thing that I always start with is going to all processes and then dynamic crop. This way I can get every single image in the same framing, because I used Astro Pixel Processor to stack these, they're already star aligned. So by doing dynamic crop, it's going to allow me to now crop the edges to the same width and height on every single photo. The easiest way for me to do it is get your mouse up here in the corner until you get to two blocks on the top and right side there. Click hold and let's just drag it in. Now, because our edges look really good, in fact, I'm not gonna do a big crop. I'm actually only gonna do maybe about right there, and I'm gonna call that good. To save this, I'm gonna click the little tab here and drag to the back. You can rename this if you would like. Dime crop. 
You also know it's a dynamic crop because of the icon that's associated to it, which we can confirm up here. So I'm going to go ahead and close. I'm just going to say yes, because now that we have the copy on our background, we can click, hold, and drag. And now I'm going to open up every single image, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. And just make sure you minimize after you do it so you don't accidentally run it multiple times on the same image it will continue to crop in okay so now every image has been cropped the next thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and build our color image i haven't seen what any of this looks like so we're going to do sho that way we can get a vibrancy of colors mixed together. So the way we're going to do this tone mapping is we're going to process each of the three images on their own and then we will combine them later. So let's get started on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our HA image and I'm going to go ahead and get my stretch and I'm actually going to go ahead and do screen transfer function and I'm going to put it down here in the bottom just so it's always open for us. I'm going to unlink and then when I want to do the actual stretch, I'm going to click this little radiation looking icon for auto stretch. So our HA image has been cropped. Our noise level looks okay. Um, being such a faint area noise, I've found in the times I've shot this in the past, uh, noise plagued those images, but this looks much better. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and I've shown this before, is I'm going to go to process background modelization and dynamic background extraction and i'm going to build the frame if you will so the first thing you do is expand let's see we don't need this one that looks good there the first thing we're going to do is click reset tolerance i'm going to set this to two <clears throat> i just want everything to qualify essentially and I know with my camera, which is the ASI 2600MM Pro, the size of 150 radius works really well. And I'm gonna go from 10 to seven, and I'm gonna say generate. I'm going to come down here and change this to division. We will normalize, we will discard the background, and we will replace the target image. So the first step here is to click this first one and press the delete key on your keyboard. And then we're gonna delete all of the internal ones and only leave the external outsides. I missed that one. And I'm gonna click hold and drag a box down here. And we're gonna call this good. And now I'm going to click the tab again and drag this down. And I'm just gonna leave it as process 10 for now. We're gonna go ahead and run and close it. Now we're going to come over here and restretch it. So the next thing that we're going to do here is we are going to run Noise Exterminator. So it's a linear image and let's go ahead and run. So while this runs, if you recall, I did the Easy Processing Suites Denoise Process, which took five to seven minutes just to run a preview and then it would take five to seven minutes to actually run the real program on your image and here we're already done so what we can do now is we can zoom into the image and we can do a before and after evaluation look how amazing it cleaned up our noise it's not perfect but it's drastically better. Let's go to some area up here by where we have signal. Let's go before and after, before and after. You can see our areas of signal are almost completely untouched, but the background is modified in a way that makes this image seem like maybe we have 30 hours in it where we just simply don't. This was a one night shoot. Okay, so let's call that good. We'll minimize noise exterminator. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and stretch this image. So I'm going to press F12 on my keyboard. I'm going to pull up histogram transformation. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Our preview needs to be a little smaller too. Now I can fit it. I'm going to go ahead and minimize screen transfer function. So the first thing that we need to do is press the reset button. Then we're going to click the check mark. And now I'm going to pull in my midtone slider and execute. Execute with the square button here. 
or apply. And we're gonna drag in our black point, and we're gonna pull in our midtone and apply. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna pull in our black point. And we're gonna try to pull it right up to about that first vertical line right about here. And I'm gonna call that good now. Okay, so I'm gonna close my preview, minimize the histogram transformation because we will be utilizing that a lot. And then the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna open up Star Exterminator. I want to generate a star mask and I'm going to click, hold and drag that right over to the side. So what we're doing at this point is we're going to pull all of the stars out or all of the stars that will come out of the image and then we can begin to actually modify our nebulosity a little bit more with a histogram change again. We're actually going to be able to boost our nebulosity without boosting our stars. Stars are the quickest thing to blow out whenever you move your sliders in too much, but nebulosity can always stand a little bit of an extra boost. That way our image will pop at the end and we'll actually have even more color variations and we've done nothing to the data other than stretch it just a little bit more. Okay, so now that this is complete, we'll go ahead and minimize the star exterminator. We'll minimize our HA stars and look at this image. I'm gonna pull this up and put it right beside where our HA file would be. Look at this image. We've got incredible details with no stars in it. This is where that big star is. I'm not gonna worry about clone stamping this area in particular. Like some people will try to clone stamp that to smooth it out. But by clone stamping that area, you're actually gonna be adding data where it simply doesn't exist. And I, I do my best to not do that. So I just kind of look at the image and I see, are there any star remnants that I can still get rid of? But I'm just absolutely in awe with this. I mean, look at these, these thin lines of the shell from the shock waves and every other thing that's playing into this expanding line of gas. It's absolutely breathtaking. I truly feel like every time I process an image like this where I've not seen these before, it's like you're doing it for the first time, but you know exactly what to do. You know how to process the image, but it's still as if this is the first time I've ever processed an image. It, it, it seriously brings me joy just looking at this. I could call this done and be just as happy, but let's get some color into this. So now that we've got our HA where we like it, I'm going to throw this into Photoshop. Let's create the folder first. So 2022 Okay, and we're going to call this HA1 and make it a TIFF file, 16 bit integer, and say OK. HA is where I want it before I take it into Photoshop. I'm going to repeat this exact same process for the oxygen and the sulfur. So by all means, if you don't want to see this process over again, go ahead and skip forward to the next chapter. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and do those with you now. Okay, so let's get screen transfer function open again. Let's screen transfer function this. So the first thing I'm going to do is process. I'm going to regenerate and remove the inside blocks. Okay, and I'm going to run, close, yes. Now, I should take a look at this HA again. Let's go back and take a look at everything before a histogram. Okay, so after noise exterminator, let's take a look at this. And let me run ABE and see if that actually does anything for us. I'm gonna turn off normalization and drag this on. We will minimize it, and open this back up. Yeah, so it didn't really do anything that makes me think that I need to go back and redo the HA. I can actually see where we have some gray background here, 
but then it's like black background here and I don't know if I really like that it's not gonna make for a smooth image so I'm not gonna worry about running ABE on the HA image so the last thing that I did on this was the dynamic background extraction let's double check we've got the recent stretch in let's run background extraction here or automatic background extraction let's click the radiation see what we got see this is cleaner I will be okay with this because this background up here matches what's in here so we'll go ahead and run it on this particular image not always does automatic background extractor work well but we'll go ahead and use it for the sake of this so now that we've done that we'll go ahead and run our noise exterminator click drag and drop okay so now that this run let's zoom in and just take a quick look here yeah look at the difference before and after it's much more smooth it doesn't alter our data it keeps our stars perfectly intact it actually even maybe helps the stars look a bit more clean too let's zoom in on this one here let's go before and after you can actually see because of all the gray pixels around it it almost looks more like a plus but as soon as I run it you can see how it gets a better balance of circular pixels going around it as opposed to just a, a T of light so it actually looks like it helps your stars recover a little bit too via noise okay noise reduction has been run let's press f12 on the keyboard let's come over to histogram transformation let's do preview reset we have our checkbox selected already drag in the mid until we get to the base and execute reset drag the black in pull the midtone to the toe here and execute we're gonna pull the black in again and again we're going to pull the black in again. And remember, we only want to pull it to the point of this line begins to elevate. You can leave it a little bit out, but see how it hits the floor right about here? We want to pull it in as close as we can without actually clipping the data that's going to start as soon as this starts to rise. And I'm going to pull the H, the O3. And I'm going to pull the O3 to about right there. And I'm going to call that good for right now. We will minimize that. We will close our preview. And here's our image. We will now run, if I can find it, star exterminator. We want to make sure we generate the mask and apply. While this runs, I am going to give ZWO and our friends there just a little bit of grief. I happened to make the calendar for my Rosette Nebula. It's a great calendar. I believe only the winners actually um, got a copy of it. And it goes through their history and it goes through some of the um, some of the holidays. It is in multiple different languages, so that is incredibly cool for me. The only thing that I dislike is I happen to make March. And this is the image that I took here of the Rosette Nebula. It's a four panel mosaic at a thousand millimeter focal length with narrow band filters. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, my last name is Carter, but there's no R on the end of it. All joking aside, let's get back to this. We'll go ahead and minimize Star Exterminator. We will minimize our Star Mask. And, you know, at the end of the day, we might throw these out, but I do want to keep them for now. I'm super happy with what I'm seeing here. Let's go File, Save As. We'll go back to our post-processing. 03, 1, TIFF File, and 16-bit integer. Save it. Minimize it. The next one we're going to do is our S2. We will start with a stretch. Then we will repeat, generate, and we will remove all of our inside squares. OK, 
Okay, now that all of the inside ones are gone, we will execute and we will close. Yes. Let's do a quick restretch. Not much changed. Let's check automatic background extractor. This one will go black as soon as it's done. We'll minimize and restretch. And I think this looks okay. It's a little darker inside here, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So we will leave it as is. Now we will go ahead and run noise exterminator. Now that that is finished, let's go ahead and minimize noise exterminator and just take a quick look and see what we've got. So we have before and sulfur is gonna have some of the highest levels of, of noise because it has the lowest integration, but look how clean that is. Even with a low amount of data, I believe this is only one hour of sulfur. It looks incredibly clean. Let's check some of this area here before and after. Yeah, very pleased with that. So now that we've gotten to this point, let's go ahead and find our star exterminator and we'll apply it and be right back. That's done. Let's go ahead and stretch this. Press F12. We'll open up histogram transformation, real time preview, reset, and click our check mark to make sure we can see the lines. And we will begin to pull in here. We'll pull the black point out and pull our lights in, our midtones, excuse me. Same thing again, repeat right to the base and right about there. Okay, so we're gonna call that good. The peak is right here about that first square. I'm content with where it's at for now because really what we're stretching for right now is the stars. We wanna leave the stars intact. Now we may not use these stars, we might use the stars from our RGB image, but just in trying to plan ahead, if we decide we wanna use our SHO stars in this image, I don't want them to be bloated because I tried to bloat it, because I tried to overstretch too early in this process. At this point, we're just stretching to make our stars consistent and happy. So that's why we're shooting for the same point because at that point, it should be very similar between the three images. So we'll minimize histogram transformation. We will close our real-time preview only. I'm going to minimize screen transfer function. And now I'm going to run star exterminator and apply. And I'll fast forward from here. Okay, so now that that's done running, we'll minimize our star mask and star exterminator. Put the stars up here, and we'll go ahead and say file, save as, Veil Nebula post processing. We're going to call this uh, S2, 1, 2. Okay, so we are now in Photoshop, so let's go to our first image. The first thing I'm gonna do is do Control J, I'm gonna go to filter, Pro Digital Software and Astro Flat Pro. I'm gonna just run it with its recommended settings and we can see before and after. You see how it gives me a better balance throughout the entire image of gray tones meeting the background. So we'll keep that. We're gonna right click and say flatten image and call that good, but we're not done with the image yet. On the O3, Control J, same thing, filter, other, excuse me, pro digital, astro flat, and execute. And I like this too. Before and oh, now. Yeah. Yes, I do like this better. See how we have a lot of black right in here? I don't really like that amount of black in this space because it's not really anywhere else. I like this one because it's really kind of smooth between all of them. So I'll right click on filter layer one and flatten image. Same thing, control J just makes a background layer copy. And then I will go to filter, pro digital, astro flat and okay. And this looks really good here. You see the difference between the two after and before. Before has a lot of darkness here and it doesn't match this up here. But these are much closer between the three of them now. So I will right click and flatten the image. So now I had told you to do this process, we have to stretch our nebulosity just a little bit more. So how do we do that here and make it work? I'll show you. 
So the first thing we're going to do here is I always like to make a copy. So Control J, and then I'm gonna do Control L to bring up our levels adjustment. I'm gonna pull in our black slider just a little bit, and I'm gonna pull in our white slider all the way until this point. So what are we doing? Let's move this over and let's watch. See how we lighten up the nebulosity quite a bit? So I'm gonna find the points that I can bring it into here and then can we stretch this just a little bit more to make it even brighter i'm gonna call this fine here we're not looking anything we're not looking for anything crazy we just want to make it a little bit lighter so when we mix it'll bring out even more color variations and you can kind of see the difference we haven't done anything too substantial we've lightened up the background just a little bit but we've mostly lightened up the nebulosity so I will right click and flatten that image file save as call this HA2 and okay so now that we're done with HA I will go ahead and close it and let's go back to our O3 same thing control J control L I'm gonna pull in our black point and remember, we only want to bring it to where this line is. This line starts right about here, so I'm going to bring it up right next to it, but not on it. And then we're going to pull our white point all the way until we have white point data. You can pull it further, but then you'll see how we blow out the whites. So I don't really want to do that. So we'll bring it to maybe right about here. And then let's brighten up our midtones a little bit. I think we did. Probably good right about here. I think we did 13 on the other one, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with 1.13. I don't think it's a like for like, but we'll keep it in that general vicinity. And we have before and after, before and after. So all we're doing is going to make the nebulosity pop. So file, save as. And in case I wanna revisit these, maybe I do too much, I always have my first version so that I can go back to. Okay, that's saved, so we'll close it. Same thing, Control J, let go, Control L. And let's pull it in. And pull in the white point. And now let's boost. It's probably good. I'm keeping it on the background here because it's still relatively noisy. We don't want to boost. So if we do this right here, this will add a lot of noise to our final image, as well as cause the background to have colors that we don't want. We would essentially be saturating the background with a color, in this case of red, that won't actually exist. So I don't want to do it that much. I do want to keep an eye on it and I want to be vigilant. If we started at one, how far do you go? Well, you want to keep an eye on your nebulosity, but also use your peripherals and look at your background. Is this too much? Probably. This is probably way too much in this case. So let's find a happy medium, maybe right about, maybe right in here, and let's look at our before and after. So you see how we do boost the background just a little bit, but we really focus on our nebulosity. Something you can do, which people say is probably not recommended, is you can add a layer mask, or we can copy our background, put it on top into a layer mask and then do control I to invert it. Go to the paintbrush. We'll add a little bit more opacity and flow to it. And we're gonna hit just our background areas. Now on your keyboard, if you do your brackets, which is just above your enter key and right next to the P key, you can actually kind of paint back in the original background. And that way you keep it from being overstretched in these bigger areas this is an option that you can do for the sake of this video i'm not going to do this but you could this will help keep your background intact so from here what i'm going to do is right click flatten image file, save as, 
backspace to tiff save okay and we will now minimize this and go back to picks we'll open up picks and an ha2 o2 or o32 and sh22 so now we have our three images this is where it's going to get really fun we'll minimize them i am ocd i will put them together put them up top we're going to go to channel combination this is where again it's going to get really cool this is where we're going to see the colors that we just generated for the very first time and look at that we've got some amazing blue in there we've got some crazy green colors from the hydrogen and we've even got shades of red in there because of because of the sulfur now you could stay in picks and you could probably do your color masks from utilities and go in here and modify your colors i find that working out of photoshop with colors is a little easier so i'm gonna do save as and i'm gonna do sho1 I'm going to go back to Photoshop to alter these colors a little bit. I'll put this one just underneath. Let's go back to Photoshop. File. Open. SHO1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Control J. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom and go to Selective Color. And now let's start coloring. So our primary color is going to be greens. Let's see what happens. When we pull out the cyan, we go more yellow. We do want that. I'm not gonna pull it all out. Let's just go maybe 60% out. Now let's go magenta. If we boost it and we decrease it, you see how it changes our colors? I'm actually gonna leave magenta. I don't really wanna pull it all yet. So let's just go a boost of 11. Yellows, if we decrease them, we go completely blue on the left-hand side over there. We don't want to do that. We'll actually leave our yellows right where it is. And then our blacks, let's see. May want to take a little bit out. How about just eight? I don't think we're going to get much in the way of red. Let's take a look. Yeah, we don't have enough red really to qualify, so let's just reset that to zero. Cyan. Now, you've got some cyan, but you've also got some blue. You can see the changes when I move really quick. That way we know exactly what we're looking at. We do want to boost our cyan just a little bit. Probably want to take the magenta out. That'll really lighten it up for us. So let's go. And when you're watching me, don't freak out. But I do like to go all the way to one side and then the other. That way you know what you're looking at. And then you know what you're working with. You could pull all this magenta out and go more of a turquoise color. My understanding from watching a number of space um, documentaries is O3 is not really this blue that you see. It's going to be more of a turquoise teal combination. So next we will do yellow. And let's see what happens when we touch our yellow. Look at that. If we take out all of our yellow, we really go blue. I actually kind of dig that, even though it's a little less natural. Let's just go with it and see what happens. Now we can pull some of this darkness, the blacks out. I'm going to leave that as is right there. And now let's hit our blues because I think we're also going to have some qualifying blues. Yeah, see that? It's now purple. So let's boost our cyan in those areas. Let's just go marginal 20%. And let's do this. Oh, I like that. If I pull all the magenta, we go completely teal meets turquoise. I'm going to pull out about 50% there. A lot of jokes to be had here. Um, yellow. Yellow's not going to do a whole lot for us. It is, if you watch in this area of the circle right there, when I move the yellows, see how we really make some of those fainter areas pop? Just because of that, I think I'm going to actually boost yellow a little bit, or remove more yellow than anything. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's check out our black point. I'm going to leave it at zero. 
So I'm going to call that good, except I'm going to go to our neutrals. Now we should see a fundamental change because of this. Look how our whole image can change with just the slide of the cyan. So let's see which direction we think we want to go. Right here, I don't like it at about a 50% mark because look at our background. We're adding color that doesn't exist. I only want to modify the areas within the nebulosity. So let's just go to maybe 10... Let's call it, yeah, 10%. Let's look at magenta all the way left and all the way right. So we'll put that right about, let's just call it 20, How about 19. We're not doing too much. Yellows, see we can really impact the image drastically by pulling all that yellow out. But if we add all the yellow, our image looks kind of weird. So I'm not really sure. How about we just go minus four? I don't think that's going to add a ton of value. Let's check out our blacks. See how we can really blow it out or make it way too dark. So let's find us. Kind of like the idea of taking a little of that from there. How do we call that good? So now what I'm going to do is say right click and merge down. But then I'm going to go do this process again. Selective color. Let's go back now. We've got some yellows to work with. Let's see what we can turn our yellow into. With the yellow, what we want to do is try to hit more of this goldish looking color. So for this sake, I think I'm going to pull, let's all call it 40% of the cyan out. Let's look at adding some magenta. just there we want to add some yellow to it but where we add yellow maybe we want to add more magenta and let's see Can we... I guess we could actually look at pulling all the cyan out that might be okay let's see what we can do here I don't want to do a full magenta that's more of orange. I'm looking for more of a goldish color. So that's probably okay right in there. Let's see what we do with our blacks. I'm going to leave the black point here, the black percentage, right where it is. So then let's look at our greens again and see what we can change. As you see, there's not a whole lot. We're going to be looking primarily inside of this circle. That's why I like to shake the slider back and forth, because as you see, the whole image is not changing. Only certain areas are actually changing. So let's boost our cyan just a hair. Keep some of that green inside of these, these highlights right in here. Let's see. I think we'll be good at 60 there. Let's go yellow, maybe right here. Okay, so cyan, let's see if we can clean this up just a little. Add just a little bit more of cyan. And I don't like pulling some of that magenta out. Yellow point. Doesn't seem like it's doing a ton, but let's pull about, it's probably good there. And I like the idea of really kind of brightening this up. So let's pull about 50% of the black out of the cyan. Blue, same thing. Probably too blue. Let's maybe leave right about here. Uh, you know what, let's do a little bit more and then what I can do is pull our blacks down just a little bit. And that'll pull some of that saturation out, but it'll get the color where we want it. Yeah, let's pull some of that magenta out. That's looking killer on those blues. Pulling all the yellow out, I think makes it too blue. But I like this area right here. Watch this area and this area in here. When I move this around, it really makes those areas kind of pop a little bit. I 
Okay, and then let's go back to our neutrals. And let's go cyan. Full 14%. Oh, look at that. Just boosting our magentas by four. Makes that kind of a crazy cool color. We'll just leave it at four and yellow. I should do a boost of two. And black point. We want a combination with altering the black point. What it's doing is it's basically saying how light are your colors going to be. So for this case, our neutrals, we're basically saying how light they might be or how much dark they might be. Now, whenever you pull out some of the black percentages from these colors, you might have to consider bumping up your saturation to counteract some of that color loss that you're going to have. You're going to bring down the color just a little bit, but you're also going to dull your color a little bit. So if you add a little saturation after the fact, you're going to get some of your color back, but it's not going to brighten up the image that you had, the reason why you pulled the blacks out to begin with. So let's see. I like this right about here. So we're actually going to boost that just a little bit. So let's say merge down. And I'm going to do Control J to make a copy of that because I want to check. I go into Vibrance. We can make the image colors really pop if you add too much Vibrance. That's way too much. We start at zero. We go about 20%. Let's see what we do with the saturation. That's obviously way too much. Let's go back to about zero here. I actually like it right there. So pretty much at zero, you don't need to touch the saturation in this case. So let's say merge down. Now let's do a hue. Let's say, just say masters and see what we can make some of that yellow a little more gold. Kind of like that. I don't think we need to worry about saturation, yeah. Let's go back to zero. Let's maybe just do four as well here. Let's see, yeah. We don't really want to mess with this lightness, I don't think. I think we're in a good spot right here. So I'm going to right click and say flatten image and we're going to call this good. I really, really like this. I think that looks pretty good where we're at. So let's go file, save as, and SHO2. Okay. And then we'll go back to pics. And I'll just check it out again and make sure we still look good. So. The only thing I want to double check now that we've moved it here is on my screen at least it looks on my screen at least it looks like it's a little bit darker inside of Pix Inside. So let's do a quick lightness check inside of Pix. So I went up here and I create the CIEL, which is a lightness mask. Let's throw it on the top. Let's minimize it. Drag it over here. I'm gonna right click, go to mask, and turn off the show mask. Now what I'm gonna do is go to my curves transformation. I'm gonna go to real time preview. I'll make my curves just a little smaller here. And let's just see what happens when I boost. Let's just stick with RGB. I think that's gonna be good. See the difference? It's just like a little, I just don't want that, but it's just a little bit lighter. But where we boost our colors, we wanna make sure we boost our saturation. Because as you boost, let me go back, go to RGB here. Let's reset it. If I boost this much, you see how it like blows out with white? You almost have to match it so you keep your blues. See the difference? We're obviously not gonna go that far. So let's just reset. Let's just go RGB. Let me reset. 
reset again. Figure out where I want this. I like our mid-tone areas right about here, but let's see if I can pull down our brightest areas. So if you watch right in this region, see how it's almost white? I want to not have it do that. If I wanted to do that. Let's pull down just a little bit. And I think that looks good there. Let's add just a little saturation. See how we can add way too much really quick? But our blues, we want to keep an eye on our blues because we don't want a dull blue. There's a lot of oxygen in there. We really want it to pop. So let's make sure we're doing justice. That's probably okay right there because we're really in line up here in this general region without doing too much, but then we're matching what we did more for these, uh, these lighter, more faint areas of the nebulosity. So let's call that good. I just want to see something here. Okay, so let's minimize our curves. Let's close our real-time preview and let's remove our mask. So here's our SHO image. Let's minimize this. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to use... So I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use our RGB stars. Why not make this look as natural as we can, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you how. The benefit is, is we don't have to do this tone mapping, right? We don't have to process each image by itself. So we can just go to channel combination. We can go to red. We can go to green. And we can go to blue. Generate our image and channel combination. And we should still if you remember, this is an excellent one-shot color camera target as well because it's a seven magnitude image. So there's a lot to be had with just a simple one-shot color with no filter even. All I did was use red, blue, and green filters. Let's see what we actually get with this. So now with this, you can see a lot of the details that we got from the other image except because of the narrowband filters i can take longer exposures gather more data and really make it pop and this is the difference this is why narrowband and rgb imaging are so different yet they're still similar right you get drastically improved images with a monochrome camera shooting with narrowband filters so let's go ahead and minimize this Put it over here. And now with this image, what I want to do is let's go to background. Let's say generate. We're going to remove our insides. Let's say division, check. Close here. So that looks good. So next thing I'm going to do is run background exterminator, which should benefit an RGB image more than an SHO image. It'll go black once it's done. And we'll have to restretch. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're pretty clean here. Let's go to noise exterminator. We're gonna drop that, let it run, and we'll be back. All right, now that Noise Exterminator has run, let's take a look at the difference with both four. See how pixelated we are, and there's a lot of green in there, and now there's not. So now we have a lot of green up here, so we are going to first stretch our image. We'll click F12. That's way too much of a stretch. And this is why I don't always trust the screen transfer function, is it does a big time stretch. So let's Go to F12 again. Let's go histogram transformation, and we are going to control our own destiny with how bright this is. Pull in our midtones, get to that point where that star starts to pop. Bring in our blacks, pull in our midtones. Remember, we're only concerned with our star color. So let's only focus on the star color. You know what? I actually missed a step. Let's go back really quick. Undo this stretch, undo this stretch, 
Okay. Let's get back to screen transfer function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go alt in to do a preview. With this preview, I've defined what my background is. Maybe that's not, you know what, let's delete that. That's probably not the best point. Let's find an area up top that we know should be nothing but background. How about right here? This is pretty dark. So alt in, just click and do not add any stars. You only want to define your background. We can come over here to background neutralization, image 25 preview and execute. Then we can go to color calibration, go to background reference of preview one as well and execute. So now I'm gonna press F12 and I'm gonna go back to histogram stretch preview, reset, and now let's work this. Basically, we just neutralize our background and balance our colors a little bit better. Okay, we're looking good. And we'll just keep working this just like we've done before. Pull in on the black slider there, and somewhere about the toes, this is probably pretty good right about here. Let's execute, reset, and just take a look. Are we content with how the stars appear? I think I think if I add any more, we're gonna really start to get too strong of stars. The key thing to remember is you want good star color, but you also don't want them to be so bright that it takes away from the nebulosity. So I usually yield on the side of caution and leave them a little bit fainter because it's a little easier to keep your nebulosity popping and your stars as supplementary things to look at. Your stars should not dominate your image. Unfortunately, with most emission nebulae, you don't have a choice. That's the whole purpose of an emission nebula is to create new stars. And they're usually in heavily populated star fields relative to where we are here on Earth. But in this case, I think I'm gonna call that good with the stars. We can maybe boost it to right about here. I'm not gonna do any more than that though. I think that's fine right where we're at. So let's come up here. Let's close our real-time preview. I can close my actual preview by deleting it. And now I'm going to run star exterminator. We're gonna generate the star mask. We're gonna let this run and we'll be right back. Okay, so before we actually run our star exterminator, I wanna run a tool. So let's go to process, all processes, and we're gonna find SCNR. Now that this is up, I do not want any green in my image. Look at this star, how much green is there? So I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull all the green out by running SCNR. And now we have a much better looking dominant star up here. Now after running that, we'll go ahead and run Star Exterminator and we will be right back. Okay, so now that it's run, let's minimize this. Let's minimize the star mask. And now, let's minimize our image. Put these over by each other. So now let's see what happens when we go Pixel Math. We'll use expression editor so I don't have to remember what to type. We'll go SHO2 plus image 25 stars. Image 25 stars. And we'll click hold, drag, and drop. So now the only star that didn't go well was this one. But need not worry. Let's grab image 25 let's put the stars back in let's save this image as rgb stars one save it as a tiff file and let's minimize it and let's save this image sho2 becomes sho3 and let's open both of these in photoshop and we'll get that star put back in so rgb stars one 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my RGB stars. I'm going to control A, control C to copy. I'm going to click over here and do control V to paste it. I'm going to click on our layer mask, control I to invert it. And now I'm going to zoom in to just that area. I'm going to make sure we have our paintbrush. I'm going to change our opacity to, let's say 60 and flow similarly. Now we're just going to paint that star right back in to about what it should be. And then I'm going to just go to the core and make it as bright as it actually is and just zoom out a little bit. And there we go. So that's how we can get that one star to be corrected and put back in. So we'll flatten the image. We'll say save as. SHO3 becomes SHO4. Say OK and move back to Pix Inside. We'll minimize it here. SHO4. And now I really, really like where we're at. But as you see, we have got a lot of stars to deal with. So let's go to Script, Easy Processing Suite, and do Star Reduction. Let's create a star mask. This does take a little bit of time. The star mask is completed. I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'm going to say run easy star reduction. Okay, now it's complete. So let's delete this. Yes, I'm aware I'll have to create a new one if I do it again. And now we can go before. Look how many stars there are. And then after. We haven't done anything other than just kind of dim how bright they are. Right, like if I zoom in which to zoom, I'm assuming everybody knows a space bar, and then you can use your mouse wheel to zoom. Look at the brightness before and after. All right, that way we just, we don't take away from what we're really trying to image, which is going to naturally be this area here. We care more about this prominent star because it is dominating inside of this image. There's no way to even hide it. But then we really care about all these colors and these this multiple layers of gas as it uh, expands and moves through space. And all of that oxygen, it's incredible. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go up here, we'll create a lightness mask. Let's apply that minimize right click mask turn off the show mask move that over here and now i'm going to go to local histogram equalization now because this is already bright in areas i'm going to dumb this down to four percent or forty percent and let's just bump this up to 300. you know what just to show you guys and i'll just cut through all the wait time I'm going to do, uh, let's just say 50, and then I'll show you what this looks like instead of making you wait. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm going to zoom in over here. Sorry. Let's go before and after. Before and after. It really kind of hits these bright areas and makes them less bright, but then it makes the more faint areas a little bit brighter so it gives a good balance and because we have these small structures that radius of 50 really makes these areas pop a lot so let's come up here and look at that we got some awesome colorization up here the mixing of colors looks like hydrogen and sulfur most likely in here but before and after see how it brings down the brightness. If you watch just right here on the before, we, we're really bright. Let's actually go to a brighter area. There we go. This whole area is pretty bright. Before and after. See how we kind of bring it down a little bit in terms of brightness, but other areas really begin to benefit? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this copy. Now I'm going to go back and let's do 300 and eh, let's do 275 and let's see how these compare 
All right, so let's see what this area turned out to do. So let's do before and after. So before and after. See how it's a little bit more subtle, but we're also making the bright spots brighter. So let's do a comparison of uh, 275. So let's make the screens where we can make them similar sizes. Get there and drag it down. So we'll do before, after, before, after. Now it's not a huge difference, but it's just subtle enough. If you just look at this blue here, compared to this one here, it is just slightly different. Yeah, not drastically, but just slightly. I think I like this one better because we made some of those dark spots a bit lighter. Let's see if we can find some in particular. Let's maybe look at this area. I mean, it's close enough. It might not be a huge difference but I know within this version which was the smaller kernel radius it actually made a lot of those really bright spots nowhere near as bright so I think I'm gonna stick with that one but as you can see in this particular case it's not a huge difference between the two I mean everything's very subtle you have to really be looking closely but like this shade of blue for example is in fact brighter than this shade of blue which is the same area um we could probably move over here where we get a lot of stars even and just kind of see like i get the sense that this has a little more blue whereas this has a little bit more white in the blue um it's just a couple shades i mean it's nothing again that's too crazy um, when you zoom out i mean at that level especially it's the same image effectively but you, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not drastic, but you can kind of see actually at this distance, some of these yellows over here pop a little bit more than they do over here. So end of the day, this is just a potato potato scenario. It's whichever you prefer. I'm gonna stick with this version over here, which was the clone version, which was the smaller kernel radius. And I'm gonna call that good. So now just something to test and see, it might not work out, is I'm gonna go to Script, Utilities, and I'm gonna go to Dark Structure Enhance, and let's back this down to maybe 30% and run it and just see what we get. Okay, so it's done. Let's see, before, after, This is pretty much the oh, wrong direction. Here we go. This is one of the few areas where I actually see improvements. And I say improvements, it just right in here, right in here, all through these dark areas. And then it makes some of the nebulosity a little bit darker too. So it's nothing crazy. I'll go ahead and leave it. It does give some of the cloud formations within there. Just a little bit of extra darkening to really show some contrast. But other than that, I think we will call this done. I don't really know that there's much more I want to do to this particular version. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. This will be our SHO version of this particular image of the Western Veil Nebula, or some people call it the Witch's Broom, but uh, it seems bizarre to call it that, I guess. But whatever. So I think I'm going to call this good. I, I like where this is at. This is the SHO version. It's not the more natural looking version. So I am going to post another video processing this exact same data, but we're going to do HOO, which is really going to be beautiful too. It's going to have just the reds and the blues primarily. Um, so you won't have the gold color, but you're going to have red in there. And then our blues should be somewhat similar. So for the sake of this particular video, make sure you hit 
the like button and subscribe if you liked this video by ringing the bell as well. That's going to let you know every single time I post another video. Thank you for watching today. Comments, be sure to put those down below. If you subscribe, let me know as well down in the comments below and I'll be sure to give you a personal shout out and a thank you. With that, I'll leave you guys to it. Clear skies.